Welcome back to a long overdue episode of Microphone Mondays, sponsored by Ripped Apparel at RippedApparel.com. One shirt, 24 hours, 365 days. I've been told I have a great voice. Should I be a voice actor or I should be a voice actor? Having a great voice is a great thing. Don't get me wrong. But that's not necessarily the most important part saying that, oh, you need to be a voice actor. There's a reason why it's called voice acting. The acting is more important than the voice. Not that having a great voice is, a, is not a bad thing. That's actually a plus. Another thing to consider is some of the people who have great voices, they're kind of stuck in that one particular kind of voice. It's not a, a negative and or a positive. It's just, you know, one of, those th- one of those things people just assume, I have a great voice, I should do this. A lot of those people, sometimes they do a little bit of radio, but they never get much further than that because they don't have very much acting acting experience or acting training or they've never had any theater experience. So acting is more important. I should take more acting classes. I haven't had a lot of that, so that would help me. No, you do not. That one should be an easy one. You can get a lot of work just over the internet. The majority of my work comes right here in my home studio in Memphis, Tennessee, which is a billion miles away from Los Angeles. There's also major cities that you can be in that you'll get more work, and you'll get the kind of work that I would like to get, more cartoon-type work. You have to be in L.A. for that. Uh, you also, also major places, New York, uh, Atlanta, those are, those are the cities that you should be in if you want to, to get even further in the voice acting business. But there's websites like Voice123 and Voices.com and Voice Bunny and all these different places where you can actually record on your own home studio, record in your own equipment and email it out and get, get work. It's going to be most of it's going to be non union. Most of it's going to be lower paying. But you can you don't have to be in Los Angeles to be a professional voice actor. No, you can't just get into cartoons just because you can do cartoon characters. And I'll tell you two reasons why. First of all, the cartoon industry, as far as voice acting is concerned, is a very, very close-knit community. There's this circle of people that get hired all the time for all the voices. There's the Tara Strongs, the John DiMaggio, the Rob Paulson, Kevin Michael Richardson, Clancy Brown, uh, Steve Bloom. All these guys get hired for multiple series because they're so very good at what they do, and they get hired for everything. I mean, they're 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 up there. They've they've reached the climax. You know, they're at that point. Very very seldomly do they go outside of that circle. Not that that can't be. Not that that's not possible. The other part of it is that a lot of cartoons are now moving towards on camera actors or you know stage actors or you know they're they're moving towards actors rather than just voice actors. They're not looking only at the guys who do voice acting all the time. Like, if you look at the current series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the uh, one of the stars from Parenthood plays April O'Neil. She's not a voice actor. She's an actor. She's an on-camera actor. They did not hire her because she had a great voice. This goes back to another previous mis- misconception. She has a great voice. She should be a voice actor. No, she was a good actor, so that's why she became a voice actor. That's why she got hired for the job. So uh, it's very difficult to break into that area. Another reason why it's, I can do cartoon voices, I should be a cartoon voice actor. Because a lot of people who say that, every time they tell me, here, listen to this, and tell me if I can be a voice actor or not, it's always impressions of other people's characters. None of them are original characters. Uh, Very, very rarely. I mean, one out of maybe 50 people actually send me original, unique characters that they came up with themselves. Most of them are stereotypical sound-alikes for a a cartoon character that you see in most cartoons. There's always a jock-type character. There's always, you know, a teenage character. There's always a kid character. There's always a cowboy. There's always uh, some kind of monster or hero they're all stereotypical voices. They're not super unique, uh, you know, one-of-a-kind originals because that's a, a, one thing they really look at. And another thing is nobody's going to hire you because you can sound like so-and-so from such-and-such cartoon. You know, they're, they're not looking for somebody that can do somebody else's voice. They've already got somebody who can do that. They've already, they're already hiring those people that do those voices. They don't need a sound alike. But that doesn't mean that's a bad thing. I was originally told, this is leading into my next misconception, I was originally told that you can never get paid doing other people's voices or doing imitations of other people's characters in this business. That is not true. That is another common misconception. You can actually get quite a bit of money. There's a, there's a fairly big market out there for voice matching. It's not called doing impressions or doing imitations. It's called voice matching. And there's a big difference, and I'll give you an example Hopefully nobody will be too overly critical about this. There's certain voices I avoid because everybody thinks they can do them, 
And uh, it's not really a misconception, but that's one thing I just personally avoid. Everybody thinks they can do Jack Nicholson. Everybody thinks they can do Kermit the Frog. Everybody thinks they can do Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's those people who do them really, really well or exceptionally funny versions of those voices that are the only ones that I think should be doing them. Because everybody thinks they can sound like half the cast of The Simpsons or half the cast of Family Guy. That doesn't mean you're going to get hired at a, on a cartoon because you can do those characters. But in some cases, the actor passes away, the actor gets sick, the actor retires... Or they're just looking for someone else because sometimes they replace that actor for no good reason. You know, never know. Um, being able to do those characters' voices in that case actually could get you hired for the job. Uh, look at the Affleck situation. So uh, there's uh, there's those people out there like Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings has had a very, very uh, financially beneficial career by being able to do Winnie the Pooh because he replaced the original actor. <laughs> and also Tigger, too, don't forget. So because he was so good at doing that voice, he replaced those original characters. And that was two, that's two actors he replaced. He replaced Mel Blanc doing The Tasmanian Devil. Uh, Bob Bergen replaced Mel Blanc doing Porky Pig. You know, so these there are actors out there that are replacing the original actors. There's also what's called voice matching, which I kind of sort of mentioned. Uh, being able to do a spot-on impression. Not a funny impression, not a, you know, and I'll give an example like Kermit the Frog. That's one of those voices that everybody thinks they can do. But everybody thinks they can do this, this Kermit the Frog. <laughs> But there's a big difference between that version that you think sounds like Kermit the Frog and the version of Kermit the Frog that actually sounds like Kermit the Frog. Because if you remember right, Jim Henson's voice really did sound that way when he talked. He didn't change it very much. So being a, doing a spot-on impression, a 100% dead-on impression, that's a voice matching. And that's what I get hired a lot for. I get hired to do Jeremy Renner's voice. I get hired to do Chris Hemsworth's voice. I didn't get hired to do Richard Jenkins' voice one time, which I didn't think I was. I had a chance at that at all because it's such a unique very difficult voice to match but being able to do that being able to hear those qualities and be able to contort your voice to sound just like those those actors replacing dialogue and trailers adr work stuff like that there's actually a fairly lucrative amount of money to be made there i even made some money off of voices.com voice matching i voice matched for uh, arnold schwarzenegger for a an announcement a series of announcements about a conference that was coming up. I also uh, did some non-union work with a company I first got hired with. I was voice matching for Kermit the Frog and voice match for Christopher Walken for just some, I think it was a um, contact lens commercial or something like that. So there's uh, even non-union uh, voice matching to be done out there. So that's another common misconception. I hope that this video was helpful. If there's any other common misconceptions out there or any other questions you want to ask me, feel free to leave a comment below. below. And as always, check out RippedApparel.com for the coolest shirts ever made. And if you want to know more about voice acting, there's great sites you can go to, PatFraley.com, VoiceOverUniverse.com. There's a, a ton of uh, information readily available on the Internet. I'm John Bailey. You stay classy, Internets. As of today, December 10th, 2012, Ripped Apparel's feature shirt is this awesome Nightmare Before Christmas Doctor Who shirt.